but I decided since it's his birthday, he can go first. Oh, hey, I appreciate oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. Uh, Freeze doesn't celebrate his birthday, but the good news is um, we don't celebrate it either, so it's fine. <laughs> On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, Trump gets his mojo back. Beetlejuice blames everybody else. Freeze doesn't celebrate birthdays, and neither do we. Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Danny Markey and Freeze, and uh, this is episode 181 of the John 1911 podcast. You know what? Screw it. I almost loved it, but I'm leaving it in. How's everybody doing this morning? <laughs> hey, we're all good. I'm real good. That's good. That's good. So um, I'm waking up today um, and checking the news, and I guess Beetlejuice, the mob showed up at her house. <laughs> and if you want to know who Beetlejuice is... <laughs> That would be the mayor of Chicago. Oh, my God. You you obviously saw my meme. (laughs) No, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Lori Lightfoot is the mayor of Chicago. And I don't know anything about her. So, But I finally, like, saw a picture of her somewhere. And I literally was like, she looks like Beetlejuice. And then you sent the meme afterwards. I guess other people have made this association. So, yeah, Lori Lightfoot, I guess – You know, these hippies, they try to get in bed with the communists. I guess she supposedly talked to uh, Donald Trump about having federal police come into Chicago, and they've totally turned on her. And it's like, yeah, what do you think is going to happen, lady? I mean, (laughs) you know, I mean, if the commies do take over, here's the here's the thing. People like Lori Lightfoot and these governors that get slimed at these protests. Look, dude, look, if the commies take over. Everyone knows that the guys at the John 1911 podcast, it's going to be one hell of a show trial, and we will all end up in front of a brick wall, okay? <laughs> but here's yeah. the thing. You look to your left, Lori Lyons, liberal mayors will be right there with us, and that's what they're slowly figuring out. And uh, I just thought, was like, huh, that's interesting. So, so I want to, I want to, I'm going to set the tone of the podcast because we'll start off with some politics, then we'll go into some gun stuff. Okay. So, because I've been pretty hard on Trump the past couple of pods, I've been very unhappy. Yeah. But I have to say, after about the past say six days, I believe Donald Trump has got his mojo back, and he can win this. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? Or am I off base? No, I, I mean, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I guarantee you I don't see what you're seeing. However, I don't think Donald Trump was ever in the losing seat where you do. So, I mean, we're coming at this from to- two totally different ends. But let's let's hear about what... Did Freeze just say he's always right? Is that, is that the weirdest always no, right no, I've no, ever heard? No, hold on a second. I'm not always right because um, who was the... Uh, who is it? Eric, Holder. Eric Holder, God damn it. You know, he is like my bane of like automatic wrongness. So, yeah, I mm-hmm. was with Eric Holder, but, you know, I'm pretty much right on everything else. <laughs> you wear little red well, shoes also? Uh, you know what? I'm going to. Because gonna... red shoes were under the house, bitch. I know what you're referring <laughs> to. <laughs> wow. They're velvet. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the girls are spiteful today, everybody. Um, so here's let, let me just you know what I'm gonna just just to bounce off of Eric Holder, and, and that, which makes me bounce off of Donald Trump or be uh, bounce off of Barack Obama. Just as um, and I don't know if I mentioned this on Pod or not, but you know the media when when Barack Obama was standing in front of Mount Rushmore giving his speeches, it was majestic and magnanimous and you know and all of this and then when donald trump is in front of mount rushmore apparently mount rushmore is a sign of white supremacy and racism uh i don't know all 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 this uh, insert favorite you know crappy word this week and what i thought was funny about that is nobody on the right seems to want to acknowledge this and nobody on the left seems to want to acknowledge this either. And I hate to break it to you. Barack Obama will be on that Rushmore. 
someday. It may take 100 years. He will be. There's no two ways about it. Now, there may be a compromise. It may be Barack Obama and Ronald Reagan both end up on Mount Rushmore. Because if you look at Mount Rushmore, there's lots of room left. And the first black president is going to end up on Mount Rushmore. And I think Ronald Reagan's probably going to end up on right. Mount Rushmore as you, well. You and, know, you know what? Actually, Marky, I, I'm not. I'm actually not going to disagree with you on that because I mean, honestly. Look, if there's room to do it and there's money in the budget, and look, it's not going to happen in our lifetime, but down the road when history dictates things, uh, I could see Barack Obama being carved into Mount Rushmore. And, and I'm not even, I don't even have a problem with that. He is the first black president, African American president, whatever you want to call it. And I'm actually okay with that. I mean, I think he had a failed presidency i think um i don't believe in his politics i don't believe in his socialistic beliefs but in i mean look i mean he was the first black president we had and honestly that merits a spot on mount rushmore if they add presidents down the road they will I mean, and it, the thing I'm about I think if you look at Here's the thing. See, people and this is, you know, this is talking about statues and talking about history and, you know, people trying to rewrite history. And you have to realize, you know, when people talk about Ulysses S. Grant today, they are like, well, um, you know, he, quote, won the Civil War. Um, he, you know, became president. <clears throat> people, history has forgotten that. Is the, for the for all the accomplishments that Ulysses S. Grant has achieved as a uh, combatant commander, um, his presidency was a disaster. Oh, one of the most corrupt his, presidencies in the history of all presidencies. It was horrible. Yeah, was it Teapot? Was Teapot Dome during his? Presidency? <laughs> yes, it was. was, that, was it? Oh, yeah. Okay. No. I, okay. His so, presidency was horrible. I mean, it was. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, like his, he would, you know, he would, you know, get people that he knew and like, you know, served in the army or, you know, and like, they just took advantage. Like the art history is, has even tried to spin it that maybe uh, Grant wasn't corrupt, but his administration was corrupt. And history has a way of looking at things. I personally feel, you know, nobody's going to remember what Barack Obama said at a rally in you know in like i don't know in backwater arkansas on june 14th of 2010 you know it's going to be first black president and i'm trying to think what else you know they could possibly maybe obamacare they might remember obama yeah maybe. like you know 50 years from now that's maybe and like you know that's what's going to happen yeah. and it's like these people that are trying to rewrite all this history and tear down all this stuff like I have to like, you know, like they're, they're tearing down all these uh, Christopher Columbus statues. Now, I guess I guess it's come out that, uh, you know, one of the reasons why there's all these Christopher Columbus statues. And I didn't realize I did not know this, that it was a way to placate Italian-Americans to show that they mattered because, you know. The the, com the little red guard that's running around today, it's funny. Not only are they trying to erase history, they're rewriting history. Yes. You know, a guy in 1950 or 1930 would be shocked to find out that an Italian, a Jew, and a um, – let's see, what else? An Italian, a Jew, what's the other one? Uh, 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 Italian, a Jew, and I can't remember, the, but they're considered white people now. But I guess back in the day, they weren't. I mean, they would have, uh, you know, it, it was like, what? You know, they were all the, the, the you know, and so it, it's just interesting that people try to put their, their version of history or their interpretation of history on, you know, what happened in the past and, and try to judge things by that. And look, Freeze. Like, you know this, like with World War II, like people today like to talk about um, the, the concentration camps in, in Germany, in occupied Europe I, I, during I'm, World War II. I'm, I'm glad you specified in Germany and not the United States, because we had them too. 
Yeah, I mean, concentration camps were a thing, but you know, but but hold on, but the um, but you know, uh, the the you know the Bo- the Boer War, you know, the British they were basically prisoner of war camps. You know, we you know we had our concentration camps or whatever you want to call them, but the Nazis what they were doing is they were trying to exterminate an entire group of people. It wasn't yes. a place to store, co- you know, enemy combatants. But here's the thing. And everybody likes to judge America and judge history on what did somebody do or not do or say or not say about the concentration camps in Germany. Well, here's the thing. In 2020, we know everything. Like we know it all. We know about we know about when the camp started. We know when there were attempted breakouts. We know about Jewish resistance fighters trying to break people out of like the the the, tra- the rail the train in Belgium and like all of these different things. You know the Warsaw Ghetto uprising, all of this stuff. And people like to pretend that you know if you're living in in Illinois in 1943, you may have heard. You know it's like oh, it doesn't sound too good for the you know, for the Jews over there, you've heard grumblings and you've heard, but you didn't really understand like what was going on the way you do today. Well, here's the thing. People today running around with iPhones and shit that says made in China do not really appreciate what's going on with the Uyghurs in, in, you know, in China, like people today do not really, how many people went to the bodies exhibit in the United States, looked at all these skinned bodies and never put like, where did these bodies come from? Oh, they just well, they donated their how how noble they donated their bodies to science. <laughs> Such noble people in China. No, you know, look. it's like, dude, those are fucking Uyghurs, bitch, and nobody no. put it together. No, I did. Look, here's the thing: I saw the bodies exhibit, and it was one of the most amazing exhibits I've ever seen. However, I did realize that every let's say donated body to the exhibit really wasn't quite donated. I mean, I, I mean, well, he started there, yeah, there. It wasn't a lot of old people with cirrhosis of the liver. Like it was like a lot of perfect specimens. Oh yeah. Like, what, like, how, okay. There's like this young kids and uh, you know, and like it, you know, it's like, what do you like? Well, maybe, you know, I remember like, well, maybe it was some prisoners. Here's the thing. It's very likely that in 2040, there could be a photograph that comes out of some young person who's running for president that was taken at a bodies exhibit, you know, like, oh, this is what made you want to go to medical school. And then 20 years from now, it turns into you were a party to the concentration camp death mutilation of Uyghurs in China. Oh, that very well could be. I mean, look. And see, people, yeah, the, the history as it, exi- as it exists right now is not necessarily the way it will be in the future. And the kids today, the little Red Guard going around today trying to just say Jews are now white people, Italians are now white people, and things are the way they are today. And so we have to judge everything based off of today, today's standards. Um, they're, they're, they're going to they're, – they will be hung by their own petard. What? You know, in 20 years. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on a ledge here, and what I'm going to say is not very popular, but the exact analogy that you're talking about is the same analogy as the Black Lives Matter you, you, movement is using today. Because, look, the truth is, um, back in 1776 and all the way up until 1865, Slavery was an institution in this country, right or wrong. By today's standards, it's totally fucking wrong. But you know what? It wasn't wrong back then. Some people thought it was. The vast majority of the people thought it was cool. You know? And I mean, the, the, the thing is, I'm just saying that, that time changes history. It shouldn't, but it does. You know, people's understanding of history can change, but you shouldn't change the facts. Like, here's an interesting point. If you ask the average. I'd say Black Lives Matter person. OK, per, whether the person is a communist or a just I support black lives like the name is got to You got to give it to him. The name is genius, dude. Like Black Lives Matter. How can you be against that? It's like, 
water is good. Yeah, water's good. I, okay, yeah, black, of course. But the thing is, if you ask an average member of that what they've been indoctrinated to think, like they make it sound like – these people make it sound like America is the only country that had slaves. <laughs> America was the only country that had slavery. America inherited these institutions from, from around the world. Yes. Look – I mean, look, you know, it's like, I mean, like there wasn't the, slavery in all these places. Look, the Egyptians had slaves. The Greeks had slaves. The Dude, Romans, I'm, I'm not talking before Christ. I'm talking in 16, 1700s. It's like, but if you ask, a, if you ask an average, dumb, red guard, little hippie kid today, they think they've been taught that slavery built America, the 1619 Project, and we were the only country that had slaves. We're the only country that fought a war to end slavery, as far as I know. Uh, you know what? I don't actually know the answer to that, but I have to think off the top of my head, I, I tend to agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, no, yeah. I don't know if we're the only one who fought a war to end slavery, but off the top of my head, I truly do not no, uh, we are we are probably the only country that's ever fought a war to end the slavery of other people that you did not know. Like there's people that probably fought wars to be like to save their family, like my family is being enslaved or my king has been enslaved. But, you know, people from Ohio went down into the south and there people in Kentucky, there's, there were there were there were southerners from southern states that fought for the union as you know like the kentucky like there's a kentucky unit i can't remember i had in you know kentucky let's say the kentucky i'm going to use the 54th just because like massachusetts say hey, this mythical group called the kentucky 54th well kentucky was a confederate state but there were can, there were groups of kentuckians that fought against slavery and fought on the side of the union absolutely and they fought for people that they did not know yeah they, they fought for people that they didn't know, they didn't have any contact with, they weren't their buddies, they weren't their neighbors, they weren't their friends, they weren't the next town over. It was one of the few wars fought in American or world history for ideals that, you know, that you can still stand on today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, like when, 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 the, when the Japanese wiped out the Russians at Tsushima, nobody even cares what that was really about. It was like, wasn't for some great cause. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it was like okay. So anyway, well, Trump. I think Trump is. I think Trump is back in the game. I think Trump is doing good. I think Trump giving his press conferences. He's running the show. Federal troops are starting to show up in these places. They're arresting these hippies. Um, it's. Uh, I you know I'm starting to see commercials now. Um, that you know they've got a new campaign manager. I saw a commercial recently where. Uh, there was an old woman sitting in her house and the, someone's trying to break in and she's trying to call 911 and defund the police. And it's like, finally, let's get this campaign going. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's get it on. I had, and I, I'm like, Donald, I, I feel so good about Trump right now. I haven't seen well, that Mark commercial, but I want to see that commercial <laughs> because that, that actually is awesome. That, that's actually a perfect campaign commercial. So it, since it's since it's Freeze's birthday, we let him. Talk. Oh shit, Danny! You what were you going to say? That. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Danny, who? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mister Mister by the wayside. Well, Mark, Marky, didn't I send you last week saying watch for Trump to make his move? He's going to be coming out of the gate. Did I not say that? Yeah, but you say that all the all the time. Uh, okay, but I told you he's going to start making bold moves. Number one, which I agree with you. I uh, think he's really. I don't know if these are. You know what? Uh, I, look, you, I I guess you know there is no endorsement like a check check book endorsement. You know, uh, you know in, in, in any. In, well, I feel like Donald Trump has seeded the argument for months. To the other side and let them run the show and you know he's not the, he wasn't defending america he wasn't defending capitalism he wasn't defending american citizens he wasn't defending these cities and now i feel like it's starting to happen maybe he was waiting for the bureaucracy you know to finally kick in and i even said on this podcast maybe six months from now i'll look back and be like donald trump was a genius for the rope a dope he did 
I don't know if that's genius either. I don't know what was going on with Trump, but I've seen a change, and I like it. Uh, I think a lot of Trump supporters do. Oh, before I forget, last night at 3 in the morning, Mayor Larry Leadfoot had the Columbus statues removed. There's two of them in Chicago. They're now gone. Uh, I heard about. Oh, you mean Lori? You mean Lori? You mean Lori Lightfoot? You mean Beetlejuice? Yeah, Larry Leadfoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I hold on. I actually have to ask this question because I don't. I'm not being a dick. Like I, you know, I call her Beetlejuice. Is I, I'm, I'm a legit. This is a legit question because I don't know. Is is Lori Lightfoot actually a woman? Or is Lori Lightfoot like? Are you calling her Larry? Well, no, that, because the, the, she's a woman. That's okay. Okay, well, that's, not, that's that's her nickname. She okay, she's she's know. a woman in name only. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That freeze I mean, you have that narrowed look, down. Look, I I sent the meme over with her and Beetlejuice, dude. You have to post that meme in the comment section when you post this podcast because it's scary how much she looks like Beetlejuice. Yeah, and she, I, I mean, I did. I, I mean, I've said it. I said I didn't know who she was. I saw her up on stage, and I was like, man, she looks like the character from that movie. And then I was like, you know, the one with the guy with the crazy hair, and like, you know, yeah. and it was like, wow. I, then you went out and found a. I guess I'm not the only person to make that so, connection. So here's what happens if you if if you're in Chicago and you go lead foot, lead foot, lead foot, eighty fucking people die over the weekend. Well, that's that wow. is the statue. That, that is the statue's <laughs> fault. She is. She has. Dude, did no one get that got, joke? With me? <laughs> she has got the yes, Napoleon only you syndrome. got. God she damn, has the Napoleon syndrome so bad. At every one of her pressers, it is never her fault. Nothing. If they bring up about the shootings. She brings up about COVID. She changes the subject. If they come up about the murders, she changes the subject to the statues. She will not admit fault in any way that she has lost control and surrounded herself with, let's just say, the best administration that she could have. She yeah, does yeah. not accept fault for anything. No. Okay. I'm, 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 okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I want. Hold on. Go ahead, go ahead. Free. No, I'm just saying I get that, but did, did but did you not get the whole Beetlejuice reference? Oh, of course. If you ever seen her close, which I have, I could not stop thinking of Michael Keaton. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's let let's stay on track here. So let me just make make this point. I'm gonna throw Beetlejuice. I'm gonna throw Beetlejuice a bone here. Okay. I'm not. Go- She's not to blame for all the shootings in Chicago. And let's just be real. It's like it's not like because she's only been mayor for what less than a year. About yes, yeah. So I mean, let's be real, okay? She became mayor and she inherited a lot of these problems. Oh, she inherited, but you the problems. So, but my point is, I'm not going to say that things were all sweetness and light in Chicago. Then all of a sudden, she came up and like she's lost control. Chicago's been out of control for a long time. It's just everybody gets a pass on it. Rahm Emanuel never got hammered for what's going on in Chicago. You know, it's like, you know, but if she was a if she was a, a smart politician, and the greatest politicians do this for good or ill, you know, this really usually pisses off conservatives. But crises are normally times for politicians, chief executive politicians, to make great strides and to achieve great things here's the thing the civil war made abraham lincoln you know the great depression made fdr you know uh i mean the uh she could have come in yeah if she had the ability to think objectively and not just always be defensive and blame everybody else for everything and not addressing the problems you know she could be like okay we're going to do we're going to do it my way. And but it seems like it's like you look at a woman like this. I know nothing about her except she must watch. You know, she must like Hollywood movies, but she. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got. That. But it's like, what was, like, I you know, that. I mean, like she didn't like she chose to be the mayor. Like, it's not like she woke up 
a year ago and said, today I will be the mayor. Today, tomorrow we do windows. Like she's wanted to, there's people in these big cities being mayor is a big deal. Being mayor is fun. Being mayor is powerful. Being mayor is, is you are center stage. And it's like, I have a hard time believing that this woman who is now the mayor of Chicago hasn't been wanting to be mayor for, I don't know, at least 10 years. Like what, what's the goal here just to be the mayor so she can, you know, today 35 people were shot in Chicago. What's the point? Well, you know, you, you, you run to be chief executive to make a change, right? Isn't that what all the hippies say? We have to make a change. We have to progress. Well, here, well, what's, what's her goal? Well, here's, here's the goal. Before she was elected mayor, she was never elected to anything. She was in charge of the Citizens Police Accountability Board. She's hated cops from day one. From day one, she's hated the police. Now, when she was elected mayor, she has tied the hands of the CPD so bad, it's ridiculous with her executive how did she? How did she get onto the Citizens Oversight Board? She was appointed. But why? Because here's the thing. We've had one of those in Cincinnati. I think we still technically have it. And people, normally there's like, okay, the local director of the NAACP will be on the board. Then you have somebody from the business community to be on the board. Somebody from the police union or whatever could be on the board. Uh, an outside observer from maybe a member from the Justice Department's on the board. You know, how did she end up? Because here's the thing. Okay, so you're telling me. Beetlejuice is not a professional politician. She's never even been dog catcher. She's never on city council. She never was in a chief of a ward. She never, she never, you tell me she never became president of a Girl Scout troop. And now all of a sudden she's the mayor of Chicago. That's correct. Is th- that can't be true. Uh, look up. That your, can't be true. Look it up. The only reason she was appointed to that board was Emmanuel wanted to give appeasement to certain groups. Well, no, that, but I just said, that's what they do. But how does she go from that board to being mayor? Because she was so anti-police. That was basically the ticket she ran on and the people supported that. Okay, here we go. So I'm I'm looking at her, I'm looking at her bio here. So uh, 56 mayor of Chicago, before uh, she worked in private legal counsel at Mayor Brown, I'm familiar with the law firm. She's held various government positions in the city of Chicago. Uh, she was on the Chicago Police Board, Police Accountability Task Force. She ran for mayor 2019. Um, oh, she was a runoff election. Uh, so she wasn't really the first choice. She won a runoff. Yeah, against Preckwinkle. Oh, you know what? I did not know that she's gay. Well, yeah. I didn't uh, know. I, I just thought I she, I, she was gay. I mean, I've seen her Beetlejuice picture, and it doesn't shock me to hear that. But, wait, Freeze, you said you did or did not know she no, was gay? No, I did not know she was gay. because honestly, I didn't know she was gay either. Because the truth is, honestly, her sexual preference really doesn't mean anything to me. I don't give a shit if she sucks wiener or if she, she, she sucks vagina. I don't fucking care one way or the other. But, I mean... If you look at her picture, uh, yeah, okay, I can see where she's a hideous male portion of the couple. <laughs> well, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm about to clean this one up. Hold on, <laughs> okay. wait a minute. So you mean like the the butch versus the lipstick lesbian? Is that she, what you're trying to say? She is not that lipstick. you just crashed into? She, she is not a lipstick lesbian. I mean, she okay. Yeah, right. no, there's no okay. doubt about that. But look, I don't really give a shit if she's my, gay or not. I, I don't care. I mean, no. My point is, I guess my point is, I just as, as hard as we're being on her, it's nothing personal. We don't even know. Oh fuck, she's married, Amy Esh Esh. Eshelman. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have. I have. I have a theory. So look, everybody's listening to this podcast right now, and we learning as we are right now that she's a lesbian because she's uh, she's in a same sex relationship. I don't know anything about this woman. I know she's mayor of Chicago, and you know we don't know dick about her. No pun intended. So, but her spouse's name is Amy E S H L E M A N Elshman. Eshleman. So 
that would be a fair was that is that a hold on i'm gonna google her i'm because i'm curious if her spouse is white okay so here we go Lori lightfoot's wife and actually she's identified as a wife is a is looks to be a caucasian female so here's Lori lightfoot's problem in intersexuality and intersectional politics in the democratic party she's a mayor of chicago she's black she's lesbian she should check all the boxes but the red guard kids will make the argument now because she's married to a white chick that she has white privilege and so they will discredit her they will they will use that as a wedge to flip on her and try to burn her house down. Hey, too. look. Because that's how this always works. <laughs> look, well, oh, can, there, there have been look. protests in front of her house the last two nights. Huge look, protests. There you go. See, all, there you go. All, all I can say is I agree with her 100% because I'm married to a white chick. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Freeze is married to a white. Mrs. Freeze is white. So I will I will, I will send her a text message. Hey, by the way, just want you to know, Freeze out of you is Look, white. And, and you know what we call her when we all when the family gets together on the weekend to grill out steaks, we call her Mrs. Cracker. Mrs. Dude, that's sad. No, I, that no, no, I'm just messing. No, there used to be a there used to be a joke. But I used to I used to know this guy. He's a family friend, and um, um, I've used it multiple times too. But he was a uh, he's a, a, a navy a navy captain, but decided he wanted to be admiral and just you know he quit. You know he's, he retired and all that. So he used to have this joke. He's like, you know, I used to live here and here and here and here and all that. And uh, they were like, you know, they used to call me in my own neighborhood. And be like, what? He'd be go the white guy <laughs> and um <laughs> and it was true it was true um so you know so yeah no you gotta you're gonna have to work on your off-color jokes there that was terrible so, white guy um, dude i love that that's so, awesome so okay you know what since we're gonna talk about i since we're gonna uh, okay did have we talked about the st louis couple that's been charged for supposedly brandish i mean I mean, okay, they did brandish guns. They yeah. did point guns at people. I have to be objective here. They did point guns at people. Yes, they did. The St. Louis couple? Absolutely. They, they, they brandished guns. Yeah, absolutely they did. Well, within their constitutional rights, but argument now. <laughs> yeah, the, re- uh, the reasonable man defense, you know. I mean, were they in fear of whatever of their... <clears throat> of their, you know, of, of yeah, and I, I think that was fairly reasonable. This, <clears throat> yeah. me, mostly peaceful protesters that like tore through a steel gate. It didn't sound mostly pre- peaceful to me. Like yeah. they ripped down a steel gate right outside their house, and then came pouring in. It's like, yeah, uh, you know, imagine because here's the thing: I, they, they're standing there watching this happen. They're like, once they get to that gate, it's going to be on. Yeah. And you know, here's the thing: we never know. We, you know, alternative history. What if, um, you know, what if they hadn't had guns, and it turned out that they would be dead, and their house would be burned down? Well, what, you can't prove it if it doesn't happen. But what if that had happened? I don't know how they can be charged. Missouri has the castle doctrine, right there, and they they, they were threatened. Missouri has the castle doctrine. How could the AG possibly charge them? Because of- <clears throat> appointing appointing a gun at somebody is a crime, even in fear of your life. That would be the argument. That would be the defense. In the fear of your life, you'd make the argument that it's not a crime. Well, but her argument would be that they was mostly peaceful protesters. And I mean, the governor of um, Missouri and the president of the United States has already said if they're prosecuted, they will both pardon them one way or the other. They're going to get pardoned. They're not going to be. Well, hold on. Number one, I did not know Trump had come out and said that he was going to issue a pardon. But number two, let's talk about this for a minute. They're both attorneys. Yes. They have been charged. I'm certain that they've been charged with felonies. Right. I'm certain this is a felony charge. 
and it's a felony charge with a gun spec. Yes. Here's the problem. They can't function as attorneys. Like if they get charged with felonies, even if they get, you know, they, they, they could be disbarred, no longer practice law. Like I don't like right now, look, they've been, they have, they have under indictment for felony gun crimes. Yeah. They, Dude, they cannot pass a 4473. Well, but here's my, my question on that. If you get a presidential pardon, could you pass a 4473? I mean, I don't know the answer. You to this. Would, I'm just asking. The answer that here's the answer most likely to the question. A presidential pardon is a piece of paper that comes from the West Wing. A presidential pardon is not something that exists in a Nick's check. So what would happen is Every time they ran into a problem where a felony gun spec charge or whatever they would call it in St. Louis comes up and then they get injured proverbially for whatever, they would have to appeal and then they would have to go through a process of proving that they are not convicted. They're not that this has been this has been adjudicated or administratively dealt with. And then, like, for example, on the 4473 um, they would probably have to go through a process of having that inserted into the Nix FBI system and maybe even get – if you look on a 4473, there is a section on there for a special number, like a serial number. And if you're – like let's say, let's say I have the same name as the two people in – you know, I have the same name as the dude in, uh, in St. Louis. And let's say I happen to live in St. Louis, and every time I go to the gun store – I get denied or I get I get delayed. It's because St. Louis gun guy, what? You know, delay this until we figure out what this can't be that guy. Yeah. Well, if it becomes a problem and I get delayed and it and it becomes a systemic issue, I can go through a process with the ATF and file to create a, 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 a you know a, a, a unique identifier for me. That means I am not Charlie Manson. I'm not that Charlie Manson. I'm not that St. Louis guy. I'm not that, you know, uh, John Wayne Gacy. I'm the different one. And here's my 17 digit special number that I fill out on the form. And when the guy calls it in name, address, date of birth, location, whatever, by the way, special number one, two, one, two, five, six, four, 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 two, three, two, two. And they're like, up, oh, he passes. But it's, here's the thing to, to be able to go through that. You have to be denied. You have to have your rights curtailed. You know, they would have to appeal. It would have to appeal everything. Okay. And this will injure them. Well, I, well this will hurt but, them. But using that same argument, it, it, it can't, if they get a, let's just say hypothetically, they get a presidential pardon, can't they get one of those special fucking numbers to type in on their 40? Yeah. Free? But the, here's the thing. They, they have to get denied first. It's like okay, you've been you're you're you know you've been suspended from the bar. You can't you can't practice. You have a you have a felony charge against you. Well, I have a I have a pardon. Okay. Well, okay. Then send me the fucking paperwork and let's fucking you get a lawyer. Then let's go have a hearing and have all this because you know they're gonna pretend they're like we don't know where this pardon came from. Did you make this pardon up? Is this a real pardon? Is this just because Fox News says it's true doesn't mean that I as the president of the bar I have to be able to prove that it's true. And you have to do that for every goddamn thing in your life. And imagine everything in your life going through your life and every time you run into something where a felony would kick you in the ass. And then you have to go wait a minute. I have a pardon. And you have to go through the process of cleaning it up. This is a huge well injury to them. Marky, I think you're putting the cart before the horse here. Here's my analogy on this. That would only be if they are guilty. What if the judge throws it out in the initial steps, just like they did for Cohen yesterday? Um, they... Uh, well, the Cohen thing is a different is a different thing altogether, and I, I, you and I talked about that off off, off pod. The um, the Cohen thing is an administrative situation about his status of being incarcerated. It has nothing to do with his conviction. Um, uh, the 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 Lightfoot thing or the 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 St. Louis couple. The St. Louis couple. The problem is that this 
being indicted, having a felony indictment against you, if you go through stuff, like you, you go, go through a job. Like I'll say, let, luckily this man, like he, he owns his own law firm or he's a principal of his own law firm. Freeze, you go change jobs and you, and you have to go through a background check. And it comes up in the background check, felony indictment for gun spec crime. Okay. It's going to come up. It's going to come up every time for the next until you're dead. That's going to come up. Yeah. And you're, I mean, it's just a constantly come up. I yeah. understand um, that, it's but, not, if it's not, about but if you're convicted. not guilty, that, wouldn't that be expunged? Uh, uh, yeah, but being the thing expunged is, doesn't mean it still won't come up. Here's the problem. So here's how the NICS checks generally work. And people that – there's a, you'll hear this, and it used to be a theory. No one really knows, but the theory was this used to <clears> – you would see – like there would be a like you'd see a guy like this used to happen to some cops. I, I this happened a lot with cops, and they weren't sure why, but they guessed it was because of their uh, their prior service in the military. So you'd have a cop, he'd go into a guy, I'd be in a gun store, I'd watch this, and it'd be like the cop would come, he'd be in uniform, be in his lunch hour, yeah, 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 it was going, hey, Marky, whatever, blah blah blah. Yeah, I'm sitting there visiting and buying whatever, and guy come in like, oh, I'm gonna get this whatever, and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the form. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, they, they, everyone knows you're going to be delayed. And the reason he got delayed is there's a quick check and then there's a thorough check. So the quick check would basically say, this is the guy, run the computer. And it would just go positive or negative. If, there, if, there's, if there's no hits, it's like, yeah, he's fine. Go ahead and give it to him now. Then it would be, if something comes up in the computer system, it would just go, bam, there's a hit for something with his name in the system delay him and we will figure out what it is and they would look into it and they they would theorize it was because of his security clearance being in the military and a, that used to be a theory that went around a lot um you know that like you're in the computer but why you're in the computer we have to figure out later you know are you on the no-fly list or did you have a top secret security clearance You see what I'm saying? No, yeah. I, 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 I totally see what you're saying. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. So, um, I mean, please. I mean, at the end of the day, we're just going to have to see what, how it shakes out. Because as far as I know, I don't think they've actually been. I don't. They've just been indicted. Have they been indicted? Well, they've been charged. Yeah, they've been charged. and They've been charged. Well, and my point is the St. Louis district attorney down there, it's pure politics. She's doing it to keep her voting base happy. You'll never tell me differently. Well, sure. No, I'm, I'm not even no, saying. I'm not, I'm not, nobody, nobody on this podcast is saying differently. It's politics, and this is why this is what you get when you vote for assholes. But – you know, I mean, I, I you can indict a ham sandwich. I mean, you can, but I mean, but here's the thing. I mean, the the prosecutor may have indicted them, but let's see if it follows through. Because the truth is, a month or two from now, when everything dies down, or you know what? Hey, guess what? Come November fourth, if their attorneys, their attorneys themselves, so they have good attorneys. I'm I, I'm assuming. I'm sure being attorneys themselves, they don't have crappy attorneys. But the thing is, if you can push this through till November 4th, the truth is, come November 4th, after the end of the election, regardless of who wins the election, uh, their charges may just go away. They could, because there could be an argument. I've seen this go two ways. I've seen, the, I've seen this situation. Remove the prosecutor out of it, because obviously this woman... She is um, she's got a and she's she's politically against the the gun owners, which happened, I think, to live. but, you know, yeah, she's yeah. politically for probably the rioters. Absolutely. So there's politics at play. But I but I have seen this happen a different way. I have seen cases where there's been a shooting or there's been a there's been a there's been a grievous injury or death in certain scenarios. <clears throat> and. 
it probably seems like it was justified or it was the scenario they investigated. You know, they looked at it and they're like, yeah, this looks legit. But for whatever reason, there's a lot of public interest in the case. Okay. And the prosecutor decides, I am not going to politically put myself in a position to be on the hook for this. So what I will do is instead of choosing to not pursue charges, I will present the evidence to a grand jury and let them decide politically. And that way it gives them an out to say the grand jury returned, uh, uh, returned a, a, a bill and um, so now they're indicted or the grand, we will let the process play out and justice will be served. And then the evidence can come out and there can be a defense and a prosecution and discovery. And then the, re- the reporters will report everything and all the phone calls and all the photographs. And, and basically every, the system will do the work that the prosecutor doesn't want to have to do to just to, to defend these people publicly. It's like let the facts uh, defend themselves and I don't have to I don't have to take the slings and arrows from the people that have an invested interest in like pros, you know, put these people in, in jail because they don't like them. Um, and that, that very well could be what, what could be happening here as well with this is she just may, the prosecutor may be like, she may feel like this is justified and I'm throwing her a bone, but she may very well feel like I don't want these assholes showing up at my house. So, you know what? They point guns at people and I in charge people that point guns at people and we'll let, let the fucking courts fucking figure it out. Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah, mean, that, that, yeah. She can go back to your base then and say, "Hey, I I charged them. I can't help what the grand jury does." But here's the thing: <clears throat> prosecutors a lot, and th- th- I'm gonna I'm gonna loop this into people at home listen to this, and you're thinking, "What the fuck does this have to do with me?" I live in mid. How does it play in Peoria, or I live in Middle America, whatever? Your local prosecutor's office has a has just about more power than anybody you've ever met the only person that i can think of that has more power than a prosecutor is a judge is because a judge can the judge has been the only person that has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that can travel back in time only a judge can do that einstein can't do it but a judge can the only other person that has the second most powerful person is your county prosecutor and here's why this prosecutor that is in this woman, I think it's a, another woman in St. Louis, has already come out and said things. I will do this. They will be charged. This person has come out, made public statements that either directly or indirectly damage or question the character of the two subjects of this story. And you can't sue that prosecutor for libel. You can't. Uh, you can't uh, pursue that prosecutor for causing damage to your reputation. A prosecutor can get on TV and make an argument to the press for you or against you, and their personal biases may come up in court, but they also are in the newspaper, and you have to live with the results. How, where do I go to get my reputation back, Your Honor? Where do I go to get my good name back? And a prosecutor has the ability to destroy you in public. I have seen this happen. And this is something you need to be very aware of if you carry a gun and you live in, say, around Chicago or you live in one of these cities. You know, maybe you're not. Maybe the prosecutor, prosecutor's office, pay it. If you carry a gun and you live someplace Let's say you live in bumfuck Egypt, okay? But you live the bumfuck bumfuck Egypt happens to be in the same county as the major town, and so the reality is your county prosecutor or whatever you may call that your different places have different different names for it may be totally have a different culture or different political view. Of things than you do out in the country, but you got to keep in mind how you behave and the decisions you make under duress will be could very well be judged by somebody that you have nothing in common with in a prosecutor's office that looks more like New York City than bumfuck Egypt. And you need to be smart about this kind of stuff. 
That's good. Point, like man. all these people that get on the internet, to get on our Facebook page, that say, "I shoot anyone comes to my fucking house, I'm gonna fucking shoot them." Well, let me, you are a goddamn idiot. Well, because uh, let me let me see. prosecutor prosecutor jackass is going to get in your social media and look at your text messages and look at your posts and hang your ass. Well, let 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 me tell you something. I have in my house right now a Trump 2020 t-shirt that my daughter bought me for Father's Day. And a what? That my daughter bought me for Father's Day. No, you no no, you keep breaking out. No, I, I'm sorry. You have a I, I said I have in my house right now a Trump 2020 t-shirt. Okay. My daughter bought me for Father's Day, and, and I appreciate it. I like it. It's cool. It's hanging in my closet. And I have a face. You've spawned? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have spawned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Strangely <laughs> enough, there is actually someone out there that enjoys having sex with me. <laughs> hey, you dick. <laughs> oh, happy birthday to me. That's the name of the podcast. Yeah. That's the name of the podcast. <laughs> birthday Nookie. Yeah. There it is right there. there. Thank you. There's the- yeah, there you go. But I also have a Trump 2020 face mask that my wife ordered, and I told her not to ever actually wear it out in public. And here's the problem. So if I wear my Trump 2020 face mask and I wear my Trump 2020 shirt and some Black Lives Matter or Antifa fuck starts to mess with me, what am I going to do immediately? Look, I'm not going to take an ass whipping from a 20-year-old kid. I'm 55 years old. I'm going to fucking pull my gun out and I'm going to shoot him in the goddamn fucking face. Now, here's the problem. If I do that, whether I'm in the right or whether I'm in the wrong, I'm going to deal with the same bullshit as this couple in St. Louis. So what I do, and this is a damn shame in America today, I don't wear any of my Trump regalia. I don't wear a Trump 2020 face mask. I don't wear any of that because I don't want the controversy because I don't want to have to physically hurt someone to the point of either being they're hurt very bad or they're hurt to the point of death. I don't want to be in that position because it's not going to come out on with me being a good guy. And that's very smart. But you know what? That's a good segue into a new topic. The campaign for 2020 has finally started because it's almost August and because of COVID and all this nonsense, you know, we haven't even like heard no one's been there's been hardly any campaign rallies or Joe Biden's been holed up in his basement, like building model airplanes or whatever he does. He came out the other day and he made a comment about we can't criticize China because most Americans don't know the difference between China and Korea. And it's just like, you know, the, these these people that deal with this intersectional type of stuff. Or they deal in these tropes and stereotypes like everybody in the South is racist. Oh, of course, it's fucking Alabama. They're they're all fucking racist in Alabama. Like they're all, you know, not like you know, Atlanta. Of course, Atlanta's a bunch of bunch of Confederates. It's like, you know, wait a minute. Atlanta's like the Hollywood for black for black wealth people. I mean, like it's it's a great it's a great place. Yeah. But have you noticed have you noticed? And other people have been noticing this, too. Have you seen any 2020 Trump signs hardly anywhere like like you used like in the yards no no and I'll be honest no, with you, yeah when I drive and look I'm not going to lie to you the vast majority of the people in my neighborhood are Trump supporters and I know that from 2016 <laughs> mm-hmm. um I don't. So, I are don't, there? Are we? Are you not seeing signs because they're no longer Trump supporters, or for another? No. Person? Here's the thing. There's not us. I have not in my neighborhood. And now, mind you, I don't live in the fucking ghetto. No, I'm. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. I live in a very nice neighborhood. Yeah, maybe not as nice as your neighborhood, Marky. But I mean, my neighborhood is not exactly lowbrow. Okay, now are you saying that you don't have Scrooge McDuck money? Okay, yeah, I, I don't have. I look, I don't have a vault where I can dive into my gold. But 
<laughs> but but look, the truth is, there's not a single house in my neighborhood that has a Trump sign in front of it. However, from my side of my front porch, I have four neighbors that have a thin blue line flag flying in their front yard, including my house. Now, that in itself, okay, you can say, oh, you know, the thin blue flag, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I have to assume that if you're willing to fly, you know, the, the black and white American flag with the thin blue line through it, and you can post a picture of my front fucking house with the thin blue flag flying in the comments if you want to. No, we're not going to. Well, do it doesn't have my house so, number on it, so, so it doesn't matter. So here, but my so point here, so is, here, so here, so here. Okay. My point is, if they're willing to support the police and fly the thin blue flag or the thin blue line flag, I have to assume that they're still on board with Trump. I could be wrong. I could be making that up, but I. Ha- I don't think you're wrong. No, I don't think I'm wrong either. But the thing is. Is a is is a 2020 Trump supporter? You have to be careful because if you fly a Trump banner in your front yard, whether it's a Trump flag, whether it's a a, a banner stuck in your yard, you have issues, and it's not issues because anti-Trump people are domestic fucking terrorists in this day and age. And they will vandalize your fucking property. And that's just yeah. a goddamn sad thing. Because, tr- look, if, if my neighbor across the street from me, and I say across the street because that's my closest neighbor. He's about 350 feet away from me because uh, I don't have any neighbors on side to side because I got that much property. But my point is, if, he, if they flew a Joe Biden flag or put a Joe Biden sign in their front yard, would I go over to their house in the middle of the night and tear it down? No, I wouldn't. Because, you know what? I don't really fucking care about their politics. If they want to vote for Joe Biden, and I don't know if they do or not, I'm just, for for the sake of argument, I'm just using them as an example. Um, If they supported Joe Biden, I would be okay with that because... Whatever. I mean, that's that's America. You know, you have the freedom to vote for whoever you want to. However, I have to worry because I'm a Trump supporter and I've got a Trump flag. I've got a three by five Trump flag. I don't fly it. And I don't wear my Trump 2020 shirt and I don't wear my Trump 2020 face mask because I'm afraid of the repercussions. And here's the problem. Unlike Seattle, where I just saw a video where some some gay guy got the shit kicked out of him, uh, they a bunch of uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa people kicked his fucking head in because you know they didn't like his politics. See, here's the problem: Antifa and Black Lives Matter is not they're not going to kick my head in because I will kill. I will literally pull my firearm out and I will shoot several of them before they kick my head in because I'm not going to be a victim. And unfortunately in this politics, I will be the problem. I will be the problem. I will be the one. Prosecuting. Yes. You, you'll, you'll be the prosecutor yes. saying you're, you're the bad absolutely. guy. So like, so like if, absolutely. If you, if you, okay. So hold on. Let me, so let me, let's, 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 let's rope this into 2020. So let's talk. Cause I think Trump's got his mojo back and I think things are starting to turn for the better for Trump. Okay. So, how many Trump supporters, I would imagine all of them, are not putting Trump stickers on their car, are not putting signs in their yard, are not putting the flag up, even a, a thin blue line flag, because they don't want to be targeted because you know they, they choose not to be targeted because they would rather just keep their powder dry and just vote in November. See, but here's the thing. I agree. Hold on. Let me, here's my hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, here's my yeah. point. Here's my point. One of the most cherished and most important things that we have in this country is the right of a secret ballot. Yes. 
And so you get to go to the polling place, walk into the little booth, pull the curtain, and you can vote for Satan for all anybody cares because that's your right. But the thing is, if you do mail-in ballots, see, not only are you o- not only are you opening to fraud, you're opening to the idea that somebody can somebody can uh, uh, see what you're voting for. Like, here's a perfect example. This happened. This happened with I think Barack Obama during the primaries. Barack Obama, um, I think it was in Oklahoma. Was it Oklahoma? What, or uh, 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 I think it was Oklahoma. I can't remember. Very early on in the primaries, and when he was running, when he had he obviously hadn't even got the nomination, and people would come out, you know, the caucuses, and uh, they'd come out and they're like, "Who'd you caucus for? Who'd you vote for? Who'd you do this?" And people would uh, not, they would, uh, they would admit they voted for the black guy. Yeah. And then it turned out they did vote for the black guy, and you know that's important. That's an important concept. You should be able to vote for whoever you want to vote for because unions do this all the time. This is one of the problems with union votes is most union votes are not secret votes. And you get some union boss thug or uh, you know, uh, a strong arm guy that looks over your shoulder while you're filling out the vote for that fucking guy or else. Yeah. And that's one of the problems with a lot of these. You know, That's why we have secret ballots, and that's why the founding fathers – wanted to have secret ballots you know you can vote for donald trump if you want to you can vote for barack obama if you want to doesn't matter like you could literally be you could be a ku klux klan member in ku klux klanville and you could be out there wearing a white sheet and be like you know screw whatever and go in and secretly vote for barack obama because you're like you know i really like that guy None of my buddies would understand that, but I really like that guy. Yeah. And now, now the exact opposite. We're at the other side of the spectrum. And I think it's interesting that we're not seeing hardly any signs for Trump anywhere. Yeah, but that and I don't know if it's all because of because people are not supporting him. No, no I mean, Marky, I'm going to disagree. At with the you. end of the day, I don't think it's because they're not supporting him. I just think they understand that if you're a Trump supporter and you defend your rights to be a Trump supporter, you will be prosecuted. And that's the fucking... Well, let me... Yeah, yeah, and and hold on, but let's let's flip it on its head, though, because remember the arguments I made about people rewriting history, or the arguments I made about how things, the way they look now, may not look the way they do in the future. And so, for example, people don't want to put the... They don't want their house burned down. They don't want their... Their yard, they don't want a lawn job in their yard. They don't want this done. They don't want that done. You know, people in 1943 did not really quite understand what was really going on in Germany um, with, you know, with the undesirables. People today may not really truly appreciate what's really going on in China with a lot of these groups. Here's the thing. This pendulum swings both ways. You can drive through neighborhoods right now. And event, you will see sign like somebody has a sign there. Like it'd be like I'll, I'll, I, I will create a scenario uh, with tropes to just create the story. Upper middle class white neighborhood, white family, Democrat or Republican. They put a sign in their yard and it says Black Lives Matter because I, I will assume that they're not communist and I will assume that they're not. They don't hate. They don't hate America. I will just assume. That they're like, well, yeah, the, just on its name, Black Lives Matter. Of course, Black Lives Matter. Black American Lives Matter. Sure. You know, people's lives matter. Hold on, let me make the point. Here's the problem with that. Two weeks from now, if a Black Lives Matter person successfully figures out how to load up a rider truck and ram it through the gates of the White House and take out half the building, you had that sign in your yard. You're now a fucking terrorist, or you're a terrorist sympathizer. But yeah. like, whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't mean that. And that's the that's the scary part with all of these groups. And it's not just the liberals; it's the conservatives. You see all these guys on our social media, John 1911 social media. You see gun guys doing this on YouTube. Remember, they were talking about the boogaloo. I got remember I didn't understand what the fuck the boogaloo was, and I guess the boogaloo was some weird childish phrase 
about the coming, like, I don't know, battle against the gun grabbers. Yeah, I'm, and not, now, sure. I'm not sure with the, uh, about the boogaloo. Um, well, because you're, you're 55 years old and you don't know what 20-year-old kids on, on gun, gun channels on YouTube talk about. But okay. they were talk this was a big thing like the boogaloo like there's like the coming the coming battle between the pro guns and anti gun people like okay. kind of like a pseudo but it was just a way like some people said it as a joke some people said it seriously some people like ah yeah the boogaloo I can't wait for the boogaloo or I'm ready for the boogaloo you know it almost became like a zombie apocalypse I saw a protest oh, about 10 days ago and there was some guy there and he was doing something crazy and the media identified him like this guy was he was this guy was it was not sympathetic at all and he was literally identified as a member of the boogaloo movement and it was like whoa what's that what's the boogaloo movement and i bet if you look that up all of a sudden there's all this shit in there that if you say things like boogaloo you don't even realize that it's been hijacked or taken over. You're like, yeah, I'm all for gun rights, and you know, I'll defend if they come to take the guns. I'll defend the rights. Then it real. Then you realize you're now being you're being uh, slotted into a group of like anti-government people, like Timothy McVeigh. You know, that's why I'm not real big personally on like jo- I'm like identifying myself as a member of these groups that you don't have control over, because you end up regretting it later when you realize that you're now getting you know. You're, you know, you're, you're getting hung out the dry for shit you, yeah. you don't want any part of. Well, that's, that's where the, the two words are escaping all of us, the silent majority. That's what Trump won on last time, and I think that's what's going to help him again. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, if he starts defending America and actually arresting these commies, these Red Guard violent people, and like, because look, when you're president of the United States, you have multiple jobs and it's a tough job. You know, you got to, you know, and you get blamed for things that aren't your fault. And you get credit for things that you don't deserve. But one of the things your job is to do is to make the argument for America. And Donald Trump for the first half of 2020 has abdicated that. And it looks like he's finally back to advocating for America and advocating for our system of government. And our economy and the way and the way we do business. Yeah. And I'm glad to see it. And if he keeps doing that, he'll win this year. Well, hey, you know what we haven't talked about, don't you? The seventy two year solvent trap the seventy two year old FedEx driver. Oh, oh God. I don't see I'm I'm not familiar with the seventy two year old FedEx driver. He, you you are you just don't realize. Did you hear the story about the judge in New Jersey, where someone showed up and shot her husband and her son, like a FedEx driver? Uh, you know it's not ringing a bell. That's the thing. Well, you were working, so go, Danny. Go ahead and I've talked enough. Go ahead. <laughs> We'll use this as a crime. Hold on. Well, we're going to use this as the crime story to wrap up the podcast because we've been going for a while now and we're going to run out of time before too long. So go ahead. This is a story. This is, uh, we'll we'll, we'll put this under situational awareness, i.e., Marky. (laughs) I hate that phrase. Stop. All right. there There was a judge and. Well, she's still a judge, and she has a a husband and a maybe 20-year-old son or 18-year-old son, whatever it was. She had this case in front of her by this attorney that was 72 years old. Well, supposedly, he flipped out over his wife leaving him. I don't know, Mark, you sent it to me if it was years ago or whatever, and he had never gotten over it. Why he had this bone to pick with the judge, I don't know if she had ruled against him or whatever else it was, but somehow he got hold of a FedEx uniform. He went to the judge's house, shot and killed the judge's son, shot the judge's husband, went back home, and then blew his brains out. I can fill in the holes here for you, Freeze, because you're, you're, you're sitting there going like, I don't even understand half of what I'm hearing. Yeah, exactly. So, 
so here's what's going on. This and this isn't being reported this way, but let me tell you who this guy really is. This he's, you said he's 72, right? Correct. He's a 72 year old member of the incel community, in my opinion. He's one of these loser guys. And so here's what's here's let me tell you his background. His name is Roy Den Hollander, I believe. And so Roy is a um, he's an attorney. And he's been involved in, like, men's rights issues. And it's like, okay, what the hell does that even mean? But all right. So he's one of these guys that, you know, they make arguments like, you know, uh, women, should be, women should be drafted. Or, but, you know, like they actually sue. Like they make all these lawsuits. Like they, you know, women, uh, men should have, uh, should have maternity leave. Uh, men should, I mean, women should be drafted for the military. And what it is, and what you real, when you get down to it and you see the guy's argument, what the guy's real argument is, he is one of these people who he hates women. He admitted he hates women. Um, he has a hard time having relationships with women. And um, he, he, when he describes women, he describes them. He claims he's for men's rights and equal treatment. But when you listen to him make his argument, he um, he really uh, he really trades in stereotypes that really make men look bad. Like, well, or, or you know that he he's not really up for a lot of people that deal with intersectional issues like this. You hear intersectional feminism or intersectional this, yeah. and when you get down, if you actually listen to their arguments. They, 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 they'll eventually make a statement like all women are bitches or all people in the South are racist or of course, of course you're a misogynist because you're a man or of course you have white privilege because you're white. It's like instead of judging people individually for their behaviors and for the decisions they make, they deal on these broad, racist, stereotypical arguments. But then this guy in particular, he – what he was is he, he traded in this for years. He was involved in all. He would sue in various cities, and you know, for like for for again for men. And so, what happened was he he sued somebody. Um, he sued a uh, a lawsuit about the the draft in like in some court, and he wanted to say that the draft, an all male military draft, was unconstitutional because it under, it wasn't under equal the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution, which I'm sure the argument he was making. What happened was there was apparently – there was apparently a group of these men's rights people like the National Association of Men's Rights or National Associations, we will sue you for whatever reason. Like it, This is like the guy – Freeze. There was a guy in Cincinnati that used to sue – because Christmas was a federal holiday. Oh, yeah. and it's like, shut yeah, the yeah. fuck up. It, these, it, these loser people that need something to tilt, they need something to tilt at windmills yeah. to make themselves feel powerful, yeah. and feel special, because they can't actually do anything serious. That's who these people are. So what happened was he sued in some court about um, the draft. And then this men's rights group was either brought in or called to come in and he ended up leaving the case. Well, it turns out he had joined this men's rights group some years ago, and they kicked him out because they said he was batshit crazy. Mm. They said he was a lunatic. Okay. And then you look into more of his history. He talks about how he hates women, and they're all bitches, and the system is set up to fleece men, and you know all these different things. But then he goes out because he's such an idiot. He goes out and finds some mail order bride or some little chicky girl that's like not even near his age from Russia, brings this girl back to the U.S. And surprise, Miss Me Love You Long Time decides she just wants to – she's not – you know, she's looking around in the land of milk and honey, and she's like, I don't want to be with this fucking weirdo guy. I live in America now. And so she left him, which isn't that much of a surprise. Yeah. And so then he hates, he hates him even more. So check this out. He showed up in California. They found this out later. He did the FedEx thing and shot and killed some lawyer in California. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. That was, was see, but that had made national news. 
And then he showed up and he tried to kill this woman in New Jersey, but the son or the husband and son, ding dong, FedEx, ooh, something from Amazon. Boom, 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 guns him down. She was in the basement. And then he went home and, or he went somewhere and blew his brains out. They searched his car. They found a photograph of like the chief justice from New York. It's a woman um, that he had her information. But here's the thing. I'm going to look if you're 20 and you don't think a woman who's in her 40s or 50s is attractive, like there can't be attractive, hot, older women. What I'm about to say is going to make no sense to you. But check this out. If you look at the judge that he tried to kill. And then you look at the judge, the female chief justice um, that he had the information on. They're not unattractive women. Yeah. And he's even made comments where he both he hates these women. They're bitches. But he's also said things like they're hot. I would love to date them. (laughs) This guy is a fucking 72 year old incel loser lunatic nut job that lost his mind because he finally, his little pathetic little life wasn't working out and he wanted to blame other people, just like Lori Lightfoot in Chicago, wanted to blame other people for all her problems, but instead he decided he was going to go out in a blaze of glory, and so he went on a little killing spree. Well, did you know that he also had uh, cancer from advanced melanoma and he wasn't? he was a short timer, so I wonder if that played into it. They say it did. They say that uh, that was part of the reason why he withdrew from a case because he supposedly had terminal cancer. But, you know, this was just he was you can just like you read more about him. And I I like these kinds of stories because I used to deal with like (laughs) these mentally ill type of people and stalkers and these these broken ass people that go through the world that really need to be institutionalized. And yet they walk amongst us. And he made it this. I've never heard of an incel guy making it to 72. And it was amazing he lived that long before he went crazy. But if you look back, like literally, there were the guy that was killed in California is like a men's rights attorney. Like they had a little, they had a little intersectional, inter Nicene fight within the men's rights world, and he got kicked out of the group. And so I'm gonna fucking kill you. This attorney out there even said publicly, if something ever happens to me, make sure you check out. Roy Dean Hollander, because he's probably the one that did it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I mean, seriously, like this guy, because, you know, you see people, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say this, because I'm pretty certain this person doesn't, doesn't listen to this podcast. And Freeze should probably remember me talking about this guy. There was a guy I used to know, and I decided to drop him, because I thought he was, I, he just got to be angrier and angrier and angrier and everything was everybody else's fault. Everything was everybody else's problem. He would get in arguments with people. He would. He was real resentful of people. He, um, um, he, you know, like, like, just, just, just that kind of personality. Like, I will never forget this. this guy. He was a federal. He was a federal employee. I'll leave it at that. Um, like, I remember, like, he saw a guy or somebody. I don't know, it was a woman drive by in like a nice Cadillac Escalade. And he made so he just went on and on about how that's a shitty car. You're a, you're a, you're posing. You're a he used to work bobo like just would tear people apart. And you know he didn't have a lot of money. He was a federal agent, and it was just you could just tell this guy was not a good guy. And he was getting worse and worse. And oh by the way, everybody, he was a gun guy. And I decided I didn't want him around anymore because I don't want to be associated with him. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 you know, it's just these people are out there. No, I, and, and, uh, and, and I, I do recall the person you're talking about. And it's like, look, everyone, everyone knows a toxic person. Yes. Yeah, you know, we do. It comes to a point in time where when you're dealing with a toxic person, you have to just walk away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it, you know, that's what this guy is. And like, you know, like the guy that like I dropped a lot of us, like he had, he always had problems with women, like, like women. He didn't even like he used to work out of the gym. I worked at at, and he would have problems with these women at the gym. It's like, he didn't, I mean, like, what the fuck? It's like, dude, just chill the fuck out a little bit. I mean, the man, we're not, the guy wasn't like 20, 
I mean, the guy's in his, his 40s or 50s, probably 40s at the time. But it was just like, God damn, just chill the fuck out. And so it's like what you, what, you, what you find out is, you know, you look at somebody's life, whether you're talking about a gangbanger or whether you're talking about an incel guy. And if they're having all these problems in their life, they tend to always want to blame the system or the man or women or whatever. And they never want to look in the mirror and be like, you know, yeah. Cause you're just fucking creepy, dude. Yeah. Like I remember there was, a, there, remember there was this incel guy. And I never heard of incel until about five or six years ago. There was this incel guy he was in California and um, he was young and he went on this like spree killing. He was shooting people out of a car. He's driving a BMW. And I remember seeing him and he always complained about uh women and he complained about like you know these women won't date me and he called the guys that 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 the women would date chads or they're like these the incel community has this weird it's the really toxic weird world but like you saw this kid he ended up dead because they killed him or he killed himself or whatever and i remember looking at him and being like he's a good looking kid he shouldn't have he, i mean a young kid driving a Nice BMW, good looking kid, lives in California. Why does why does he have all these problems with, with chicks? There's be no reason why he can't bag some chicks. Because he's fucking crazy. Hey. And the women are like, You're fucking crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, no, yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. well, Freeze, did you notice I gave you the Cliff Notes version and Marky gave you the Tolstoy? <laughs> Well, that's <sighs> that. That's because that's Marky and that's you. Because yeah, because uh, because uh, on the street they used to call me Laquisha. <laughs> and this wraps up episode one eighty one of the John nineteen eleven podcast. If you want to see these stories, pictures, or links of anything we discussed, you can go to our website john nineteen eleven dot com. That's j o h n one nine one one dot com. Number all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye.